Okay, uh, so so we are uh, so we continue to learn how to use a CNC, and then you need actually two additional softwares. Uh, if, if, just, if I just, uh, just uh, give me one second. Uh, you go that yeah. Good. So uh, you need two additional softwares other than Rhino. So I just introduced the little bit overall uh, flow chart of using CNC. Uh, so let's say that, uh, okay. So let's say that uh, we draw, let's say there's something, uh, this kind of drawing uh, in Rhino. And then the file name that we export is DXF. And then this file actually need to go to another software. It's called it's called actually Bcard Pro. And finally, we need additional software that controls a CNC machine uh, that is called actually um, Shopbot. And then Shabbat is equivalent to Cura. Uh, do you remember Cura? The Cura is a software you actually play and run. And, oh, actually, if it is if a Cura is connected to a 3D printer, you can actually run a 3D printer directly. But you can think of it Shabbat as a Cura-like software to control CNC machine. And before that, uh, you, do you still remember that um, we used uh, G, uh, G code or NC code? Uh, that is basically the code for 3D printing pass file. And actually, that's also, uh, actually, then actually it's more or less like, uh, and then we are going to use a software called Bcarb. Pro, that it actually generate NC code or G code. So actually you can think of, actually you can think of it as, uh, you can think of Brick Carve as actually Cura too. Uh, but this is overall flow that we need uh, actually three, we you we draw basically Rhino 3D to generate DX app, and then we actually generate NC code or G code by using Bcarb Pro, and then Shopbot is a software to control CNC machine. Uh, okay, so then uh, I will show you Shopbot that where you can find it and download it. So you can actually uh, find out Bcarb Pro. So you can simply Google it. And then if you go to Bcarb Pro, you can download a trial software from the third one called a free trial. And then please download Bcarb Pro from this software. Then you can download Bcar Pro Trier. Then you need to download your name and your email address. And would you download it now? It's not a big file. So you can download it while you are listening uh, my lecture. So please download Bcar. And another software that you, can, you may need to use is actually Shopbot. Uh, 
And actually, I searched a software using these keywords, Shotbot Program Evaluation. Then if you click it, then you can download current software, which is, uh, I will just click down this green button. This is click to download Shopbot 3.850 version. And if you are using, but uh, ATC is actually automatic tool change, which we do not have it. So just simply I would download this green button. And this is also very small file too. So if you go back to, so I download Shopbot and also I also download Vcarb Pro. Uh, let's just see. So Vcarb Pro here, and then if you download it, I probably, I already have a downloaded software, which is this one, Vcarb Pro Trier Edition underscore setup. I'll show it here. Um, okay, so I click this. So now this is the downloaded file. The first one is Vcarb Pro. And then Shopbot is called a setup Shopbot. So I just, I would install it. So Vcarb Pro. And then just simply, I would recommend to use always English. Uh, it's, it's quite difficult to find any Korean uh, tutorial of this software. So always use English. And then I install it and agree and that's it. I just simply click, click, yes, yes, and that's it. And I just down, I'm just finished installing it. So if you can, while you're watching my tutorial today, just download and install these two software. So this will install C++ one more time. But still it's not a huge file. So this is done. I, I just kind of unclick this run quick car. And then I just install a shop bot. So simply just double click it. And then it will install shop bot three and then accept agreement desktop icon and next and install it and actually you need a license for those two softwares and we don't so only the the purposes of installing this software for you is i just let you uh comfort let you i just want you make you comfortable using these two software that's it so i hope you just simply learn how to use these two softwares but actually the actual commitment supposed to be done by hmm, the lab computer here. Uh, it, it has an error. Let's just see what is the error. Okay, so this shopbot is installed. Uh, you'll be prompt to select a setting file and then I just click okay. You want to reload the default setting and yes normal if this is the first time, it, because this is my first time. So it tried to install a machine. I just click okay. And then you may need to select a machine. In our case, go to PRS Shopbot. And then just the Shopbot, there is desktop, desktop max, but we are going to use desktop max and okay. Then our CNC machine is installed on my computer. However, the machine that I'm teaching now does not connect it to the machine. So we can only run this software in preview mode. Preview mode is simply showing it, but actually you cannot control the machine. So this is simply a software that the CNC software that we are going to use.
And I will kind of show this one how to do it a little bit later, okay, and then turn it off. So this one is installation process. So I hope you to you can install VCarb Pro and Shopify 3 while you are listening to this lecture. Okay, so going back to Rhino one more time. So last time, we simply build a DXF file to cut a joint. So let's say that, um, so let's imagine that, can you still remember this? So this is one panel and this is another panel of, let's just imagine that this is one panel and this is another panel of wood panel that we are going to use them for smartphone case. And then these two are actually dog bones of these two connection and this another dog bone. Why do we need dog bones? Do you still remember? To eliminate any material because of, for a drill bit. So drill bit only comes to this much. So to, to eliminate any material that a router bit cannot remove, we are going to use a drill bit as a drill bit. And then kind of we are removing this material here. That's the purpose of it. And when you prepare and design your uh, smartphone case, what you please make sure that you use our proper layers. So in my case, a dog bones, I called it dog bones minimal. So I just kind of change their layers. So let's say that I select these four circles and then change the, their layer into dog bones minimal. So these are black now. And then let's say that this line is actually material. And then these red, one, red curves are actually cutting lines. So I just delete unnecessary layers. Okay. Did, okay, so deselect these red lines and simply I delete dog bones simple. Dog bones is simple. If you want, you can use that way. Dog bones simple is simply locating the center of circle at the corner of cutting. So this is simple dog bones. And then layer five, I don't need it. So I just delete the layer and then default, I delete it. Okay, so these are the basic uh, three layers that we need for CNC cutting. Uh, Ishan, okay, no, okay, okay, let's go. So at least we need one, this one is material boundary. And this one is actually the outside cutting of the first part. And this is the second part. And these are dog bones of first part. And the, the, the next one is the dog bones for the second part. And then I select uh, these files and then go to file and export to selected. And then I just save this one as dxf file. And then I just call it CNC. I just call it VCarb test. And then when you export your DXF file, please select natural option. This one just, we simply, we have learned that testing all the different file format and check how does, how this result look like. And then we just kind of concluded that natural always works best. And I click okay. So now vcarb test.dxf file is ready. So now, uh, and then the key thing is that the location of this red one is remembered by the vcarb because of this boundary line. So this boundary line is required to identify the size of our material at the same time 
this boundary line is the key for each software to remember its precise location. I will kind of show one more time. Okay, so now the next software we are going to use is actually vCarve Pro. Um, vCarve, vCarve. Yeah, so now I will start vCarve Pro. So vCarve, what does this do is that vCarve Pro convert DXF file into NC code that a CNC machine use. It's kind of same thing that Cura slice your geometry into NC code that 3D printer uses. So I just click create a new file. Uh, one thing, some information you need from this material in Rhino, I would measure the boundary size of it. So now Rob, I kind of, I recommend for you to draw some boundary line using some dimensions that you can easily remember. So let's say that uh, width is 290, 300 looks good. And then the length width is 290 and length is 220. And as you may remember, the thickness is roughly about 9.5 millimeter. So I just write down these three numbers on my notebook or somewhere. Okay, so once you open vCarve Pro, I will click create a new file. And then it asks you, what is the size of material that you want to use? So here width is 290 and then height is 220 and then thickness is 2.5 millimeter. And this uh, 9.5 millimeter. And this 9.5 millimeter is a cup one or two millimeters more thicker than the material I actually use because I want my router bit go slightly deeper side of it. So I just want to make sure that my router bit cut through this material. Okay, then just simply I just click okay. And then as you see in, so now you can see 2D view, the plan view of your material and 3D view is the, the view that you are going to cut. So coming back to 2D view, you need to import the DXF file you made from Rhino. So I just simply goes to, I go to file, then you can import. And there are many different types of files you can import. In this case, any DXF or Illustrator or any vector file is, you, you sell, please select import vectors. You can also actually import image files and then you can actually use those image files to etch or make a 3D shape out of it. And 3D model is actually, I will teach you next week than how to use 3D cut using CNC. But at that time you can use this one. And this one is another uh, software uh, specifically designed for related software made by vCarb. So please select simply import vectors and then just simply select the file that the DXF file you made using Rhino 3D and simply okay. And it's very conveniently imported by matching the boundary line of material into the boundary line of our cutting material. So as I told you that if you don't have this, uh, vCarve will automatically calculate the center point of your old drawings and then it will randomly place it. So then you will lose where it is located. So as a test, let's say that if you have the, let the, we, that we are going to add some additional cutting here, and then I simply export simply this additional cutting with this boundary line, and then I just export it as another DXF file. So this one called it addition and then save as Autodesk DXF. And then please save. 
and then select natural and okay. And then if you go back, coming back to brick card, and then I just go to file and import. And then I select the addition file. Then if I press, if I click open, the additional part will be located exactly same location as in Rhino. It is, it is kind of calculated because of this boundary line. So always maintain this by uh, boundary line together. And then when you cut CNC parts, always the sequences should be something smaller and something thinner to something larger one and something thicker one in the order of small to large part. <clears throat> so if the first part that I want to cut here is actually these holes first. So to select these holes, of course I can actually select them by dragging it. But if you have multiple objects, instead of selecting one by one, I simply select, I go to layers and I go to dope, I select dope bones minimal. Then you probably see that this character becomes bold. And then once it is changed to bold, I can right mouse button click and then simply go to the bottom one, select layer vectors. And then now you see that all the additional one is all the in that layer will be selected. And actually I don't need this black one, so I delete it. And then I reselect dog bones minimal by clicking select vector layer. So now I select uh, these uh, four circles to cut out dog bones. Now I'm going to the right side of this window called the toolpath. And then there's a pin like uh, icon I would recommend for you to click to maintain these options are always visible on the right side. And then here you have two options. The mainly we use many times this profile tool pass or this one I can simply use a drill tool pass. So I just simply select the drilling. And then it asks you, where is the start depth, which is the top surface of our material. Therefore it is zero. And cup depth is 9.5. This is the, the same height as the material height. And then here, the tool that we are going to use is quarter inch. So actually this is the right one, but if you want to change it, simply select. And there are many uh, default saved uh, drill bits on the left side of it. And then the drill bit that you are going to use throughout these semesters are actually end mill quarter inch. An end mill quarter inch is actually cut something flat one to cut sideways. And when I first learned CNC, actually this kind of data, actually we have to work on and research Google, but now this company actually researched for us and we can simply use all the default data here and I can select I can simply click select button. And now it is changed to end mill quarter inch tool. And then you can actually enable or disable pack drilling. And pack drilling means uh, instead of drilling, if you disable this pack drilling, what you are going to see is that a rattle bit go through the hole thickness, which is 9.5 millimeter at once, like and then it, it, it finishes it. And therefore it will be fast. However, uh, there, there is a high probability that your drill bit will be damaged or your material will be damaged. So instead of using single drilling, it's better to divide the drilling thickness like multiple times. So drill little and coming out and remove material 
and dream a little and then move material. And so kind of repeating these kind of processes. So always I strongly recommend for you to use pack drilling and pack depth is 1.9 millimeter. So it kind of, it automatically calculate uh, what is the thickness at each drilling. So you can also change that this one later. And then dwell and then all those things are, we don't really use it. And I would kind of save the name of this file and then to simply, uh, this one's supposed to be done first. So I just give number and then I would call dog bones and then click calculate. Then now you see the red lines are the movement of drilling path and green line is the movement of the vertical movement of drill that moving down and up. And this one is actually a simulation tool. I would a little bit slow down the speed of it somewhere in the lower part. And if I press play button, run button, as you see that this one shows how it will move. Uh, if it is too fast for you, I would just reset preview, make it a little bit even slower. And then if I run one more time, it will run like this. Uh, sorry, that give me one more minute. Looks like this one is emergent. Okay. All right, so this is done. I just close it. Uh, and then I would check how long it will take to drilling these four, these four uh, circles. So if you simply cl uh, click this uh, watch like icon, then it says, it will take 46 seconds. So now you got a sense that, oh, it'll take less than a minute and then close it. Okay. Uh, sorry for that. I have a uh, few today working together. Okay. All right, next step. Now I go back to 2D view from 3D view. You can switch back and forth using these two tabs. So now selecting now cutting lines and make it bold and select drawings by clicking select layer vectors. And now we are going to use this profile tool pass function. And if you click it, now this is the same thing with the drilling, which is 0, 0, 9.5 millimeter depth. And tool is selected now as an end mill quarter inch. You can change it, but this one simply used the previous setting for this profile cutting too. So I just simply select it. And now it's that you now can see kind of passes and number five. What it means is this one is the same thing with pack drilling. Instead of drilling all material at once, this one divide the whole thickness into five layers. If I click this edit passes, now it will say that it will divide the whole thickness into five sub parts and cut thin layer at a time. So this router bit this time will run five times the same position. However, by changing the depths a little bit more and a little bit more. A uh, general rule when you select, when you set this, uh, this uh, thickness per each time is that do not exceed the half diameter of a tool. So the, the, the diameter of a tool that we are going to is quarter inch, which is roughly about six millimeter. So maximum depth that you can cut through is three millimeter. However, that's the maximum. So I would rather use about 60, 70% of maximum. Therefore, I may cut nine, about two millimeter each for each depth. 
So if, let's say that this one is roughly 10 millimeter thickness. I just cut two millimeter at a time, and then I will repeat five times. And that is automatically calculated here. So each pass depth is 1.9 millimeter, and then it will cut five times. And you can actually control the number here at the bottom side of it called number of passes. If you increase it, uh, actually, if you increase it, you will cut thinner thickness each time. If you decrease it, you can cut this much of thickness each time. And can you guess what is the benefit of cutting at once or the benefit of multiple cutting? And that's exactly the same as pack drilling. If you cut a material more many times, actually your cutting quality will be quite nice. For example, I am changing the screen. Um, okay, if you actually, so CNC cutting quality. Let's say wood, or uh, I would say uh, down cutting, up cutting. So if you actually try to cut okay, CNC down cut, up cut. or conventional cut. Okay, so here is a good example said that you probably see a lot of wood chips around here. I would wait a little bit for you to see those images. So if you cut, if you try to cut uh, kind of thick material at once, you will have a lot of wood chips like here and then the cutting surface will be quite crude. However, if you try to cut thin material at once, then the cutting will be quite nice and clean like this area. So uh, I recommend for you to use, try to cut dividing by multiple times However, what is the disadvantage of cutting multiple times? Can you guess? And that is your most precious resource in this semester. Yeah, it will take way longer time. So when you cut sing, when you cut in it kind of when you cut single cutting, and if you cut five kind of five times cutting, yeah, definitely it'll take five times more time. So probably you will, you, so you will actually lose a lot of time. Okay, and then the next thing you need to learn is called outside cutting, inside and uncutting. This one I explained last time that you can cut the outside of line, you can cut inside of a curve, and also you can cut on the curve. So this one is actually use them wisely depending on the shape you will have. So what does this mean is that if you have, let's say that if you have some, if going back to 2D view, that let's say that if you want to cut out some area inside of it, you need to have two different cutting. The first, and then in this case, I strongly recommend for you to cut inside the first using this inside the setting. And then after finishing this one, select this one and change it to outside. So you have a separate cutting for inside cutting and outside cutting, or you maybe use it for unline cutting. So let's say select this one one more time. And then I select outside cutting. 
And then I'll just ignore this one. This one have uh, some gap between material and your object. We will not, we rarely use it. And this is another important one called the tap. Uh, tap is, uh, what is, you probably need to know what is a tap. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Do you see some small area that uncut in the middle of line that all these things? And then can you guess why do we need this tap? Anyone? <laughs> Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So without these tabs, uh, while that the router bit cut at the last layer, it starts to move around inside of this cutting line. And then the real router bill may hit some unwanted area. So this tab, the purpose of this tab is to maintain your precious material in the exact position. And then I recommend for you to have at least three or four taps. And then, I, I, and then what I do is I click this check box and then I click this edit tabs. And then I can actually select some area that I can locate some tabs in this outline and can you identify and then I select close and something you probably see here is that the length of the tab is 12 millimeter and thickness is three millimeters so what it mean by is it will left this much of material in this line and can you identify where I locate them based on the images here where do you suppose to locate this tab actually? Can you guess? Where do you want to locate this tab? And as you see here, where do you want to locate your tab? Near the corner? Uh, actually, that's exactly opposite. <laughs> you may want to locate them at the center of material. This is the hint. Where do you locate where do you want to locate any tabs in your cutting? When, when the curve is seem to be straight? Oh yeah, that's really great reason. And why then need to be straight? Because as that we can like easily cut down by ourselves. Yeah, that's the main point. So please locate tab where you can easily cut and and grind those tabs. So that's the place you want to uh, locate. So you. That first of all, you want to cut them using a chisel and easily. And after using a chisel, definitely there will be another some small material left. And then you may want to use belt sander. So you may want to uh, locate them. You can easily grind or sand. So that, uh, that is actually uh, more important than you thought. Okay, then after that, after setting the cutting depths, second, the tool passes and where you want to cut inside or outside and then you and then after adding some tabs that's pretty much pretty much all and i change the name of it and then i just call it cutting and then calculate so now you see that if you kind of take take a carefully looking at it the use kind of you can recognize that this cutting pass 
do not have some area where your tabs are located. So actually it'll move up and avoid cutting that area and coming down and go back to another line. So if you then if I kind of run a simulation, you probably see that what will happen that this is the result that you are going to see. And as you see that we cut outside of it, that you see that some round area outside, but inside is highly kind of sharp. And then this is kind of cutting the second layer. I'll just make it a little bit faster. This is the third layer. And then fourth layer is start to left some temp material here. And then this is the final cutting. Then now you are take you can take out this material by cutting this tap area. Okay, so this is the kind of finished shape that you are going to have. And then I'm highly sure that this will beautifully join together each other. And then by closing it, and then if you check the time to cut, it will take about 11 minutes. So you need to, so there is a so-called pre-process and post-process. So pre-process is locating your material on top of the CNC machine. And then you have to screw corners down to the sacrifice material of the machine. So by doing so, you can actually, you can make the material uh, hold on its position. And then you can run CNC twice, one for drilling, the other for cutting. And then you can take out the main part using chisel. And then you need to remove out the material that you used by unscrewing any bolts around your material. And then you are going to cut the tap area and then grind it. So this little piece will take roughly one hour or two hours. So probably two weeks later uh, that you probably, or of you individually visit this makerspace and then you are going to run your CNC model, but you kind of uh, reserve at least two hours. Uh, and then the more actually the better because I'm highly sure that um, none of you <laughs> may successfully cut your part at your first trial. So you may, if you kind of fail it, and then you have to prepare second material and you have to go through the whole process one more time, then it may take a little bit more than that. Uh, the whole purpose is that by sacrificing your time by failing small one, next time for your final project making, you can avoid your failing CNC process. So that's something you're going to do that. And then after you have, so now actually this dope bones and cutting uh, can be, if you click this save, the kind of disk like shape file, you can save each, pi, each file separately. So I just, if I click it, uh, you, uh, so here, uh, no post processor selected, meaning that this machine is not connected to any machine. And this one is actually um, trial version and does not allow you to select the right one. So if you actually click it, it does not allow for you to do anything. So actually, if you even if you click this one, it doesn't really save the file. However, if you click this one, you can actually save your file, this file name, that NC code. And I'm a little bit explain about NC code now. So. Now, uh, NC code is called as also G code. And let's say Z code, if you go to tutorial, it is simply look like this. Uh, okay, so I click this one, I just go to G code tutorial. 
So G code or NC code, uh, this doesn't look so great. So I find, try to find another one. Uh, Okay, so I'm trying to, okay, this is all you need. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, uh, can you share yeah, the I, screen? Oh, sorry, 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 I will replace it. Uh, 